Uh, there's two places I want to go to. Uh, the one uh, I've mentioned them this morning. Acts chapter 13. Then we'll go to Acts 8. Acts chapter number 13. Acts number 13. Uh, at the end of chapter 12, at the, at the beginning of chapter 13, there is a very logistic change in the book of Acts. First chapter. 12 chapters, the emphasis is on reaching Jews. From chapter 13 on, the emphasis is on reaching Gentiles. In the first 12 chapters, Peter was the predominant personality. From chapter 13 on, the Apostle Paul is the predominant personality. Um, in the first 12 cha chapters, the Jerusalem church is the key church. From chapter 13 on, Antioch is the key church. So you've got a major shift here. And um, they were having a prayer meeting about doing mission work. And the mission work particularly was where to send men to start and pastor Gentile churches. That was the emphasis here. So here's how that happened. Now, uh, and I just explained, everything I just said is wrapped up in that little word, now. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets. Prophets was an Old Testament word for preachers. Old Testament prophets preached and prophesied the future. New Testament prophets preached and taught. In the New Testament, prophets is one of the names for preacher. Not a fortune teller or soothsayer or anybody who predicts the future. Prophets and teachers. When you go to Acts, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, it plainly says that a pastor is also a teacher. Not all teachers are pastors, but a pastor is also a teacher. Right. And then it listed them. Barnabas, Simeon, that's called Niger. Uh, Niger means black. Um, probably an Ethiopian, probably a black man, was in that group. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Uh, Manion was uh, in the family of Herod, the magistrate, and was saved. And Saul, this of course we know as the Apostle Paul. Now I want you to notice something. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The word ministered is a general word that includes worship, uh, service, whatever was needed in the church. Uh, it definitely included prayer. Spiritual leadership as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Now, fasting 90% of the time meant doing without food. Doing without something physical to give yourself more to the spiritual. And this church apparently had a great burden to get the gospel out and start other churches. If churches start churches, that's the biblical model. And I, I suspect that's how we all have been taught from the ground up. Uh, fasting can be more than abstaining from food. If your habit is to watch TV at 10 o'clock at night, you may want to turn it off at 7 and go get a good night's sleep so you can get up at 5 in the morning and pray. That would qualify as fasting. The general modern definition of fasting is doing without something physical to give more attention to the Spirit. Now, as a minister of the Lord and fasted, notice the Holy Ghost said. Now, obviously, this was not an audible voice since the Holy Spirit is Spirit. But these were believers, so the Holy Spirit was inside of them, like He is in us. The Holy Ghost said. Uh, the Holy Ghost had made very plain that 
This is a, it's the time for us to make this change in our life. The Holy Ghost will let the leaders of this church know when the right man comes. The Holy Spirit said, come, speaks to the heart. That requires prayer, uh, waiting on the Lord, being quiet before the Lord, uh, as a minister to the Lord, uh, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me. The word separate means take this person out of the norm of life and consecrate him to my service. When you call a pastor, that's really what you're doing. You're separating a man, either from amongst you or from wherever he comes, to be the Lord's person, to be your shepherd. And he's not going to be like everybody else. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. So, first of all here, I want you to see that the Holy Spirit calls God, the Holy Spirit calls men to ministry. God, the Holy Spirit, will lay it on your heart when the time comes when the right man is here. God, the Holy Spirit, will touch your hearts. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work, I do want to emphasize the word work. I said to the guys this morning, and I'll say it publicly, please get someone that's got a good work ethic. Not just love the Lord and love this family, but will love this church, will love it enough to work for it. Work, treat that, some of you are going to have to treat this church like a job. Late John Miles used to say, get a preacher that works 10 hours a week, you got a 10 hour a week church. You get a guy that works 50 hours a week, you got a 50 hour a week church. You understand the principle? Every one of you, even is, except for the ones that are already retired, you have a job you have to report to, and you got to put in a day's work. Please. It's none of my business because I'm not going to buddy, and everything I've got to say, I'm saying right now, and I'm done saying anything. I'm going to go with Isaiah and Everything else we've got to preach as, as long as I'm here. But uh, better get somebody that recognizes that this is hard work and treats this church like a job. Whereunto I have called them. I beg you, in the name and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, get somebody that God is giving you. Don't get ahead of God. Don't get behind God. Get somebody that God is giving you. And when they had fasted and prayed, they, they fasted and prayed some more. And they laid their hands on them. That is, uh, I think the modern day uh, ordination service has gone way too Catholic in how they do it. Basically, there's no hocus pocus in laying out of hands. Uh, it is simply a, a dedication service, a public dedication service where that man is approved of the church to do that job. Now, we, we don't lay hands on people anymore, but we vote. And your Constitution and Bible says got how to vote for a new pastor. It's all in there. And when they had fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Who are they? The man, the men, Paul and Barnabas, that the Lord had told them were his men for the job. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are a lot, I warn you, I, I'm going to warn you, there are an enormous amount of people out here wanting to do the Lord's work who are not God sent and not God called. Now, Satan will work overtime to slip some slick willy in here uh, that uh, is not God's man. And the only way you're going to know what's what or what's not is this church really needs to really stay prayed up. That's that's the antidote. So, okay, let me let me show you another thing. I want you to go to Acts chapter number eight. Acts chapter number eight. This is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch. Verse number five of Acts eight <coughs> and Philip. He was a deacon turned evangelist. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And there was verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. 
Now then, I need you to jump down to verse number 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Rise, go toward the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is dead. Now get, get the picture here, just from the three verses I read. Here's this Philip, the preacher, and he goes to the city of Samaria, he preaches, great citywide revival. Right dead smack in the middle of it, the Holy Spirit says to Philip, I want you to go down this road out into the desert. And I'm sure Philip is thinking, you want me to do what you want me to get this great revival? All these people are getting saved. You want me to go out to the desert for one person? God does not operate like we think he ought to operate. And God's not going to operate the way we think he ought to operate. God's going to operate the way he's going to operate. See, Philip had won a city. Philip never knew it. The Ethiopian eunuch never knew it. But he went out there and won that eunuch. And that eunuch went back to Ethiopia and a whole country got to know the gospel. We, our work really is a work of faith. Uh, you, you can't run this work by sight. It's not going to make any sense whatsoever. We operate by faith. So, uh, go down this way unto Gaza, which is desert, and he arose and went, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all the treasure, had come to Jerusalem for the worship, and was returning and sitting in his chair, reading Isaiah the prophet. By the way, he went to a great Jewish feast festival. He got a lot of religion there. He did not get Christ there. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near. I want you to notice, when, when, when the Lord first told Philip to go out in the desert away from that revival, he didn't even tell him who or what. Not until he got there. The Spirit said unto Philip, go near, join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran through the two of them and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, understand this, what thou readest? And he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. Now, you need a man to guide you. This modern theology, this modern how things are done today, committees don't run churches. They may help, they may assist, they have a function. But God has a man to lead you. Like God has had me here. Except some man should guide me. The flock needs a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd. That's God's plan. And he, and, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture in which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. That's Isaiah 53. And like a lamb dumb before shears, he opened out his mouth, and his humility and his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? That's a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. By the way, nobody explained that to him at the big feast in Jerusalem. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man that Philip opened his mouth, began to the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Well, the result was the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch got saved and he got miraculously baptized. God provided water in the middle of the desert and uh, the man was miraculously baptized. They went down into the water and they came up out of the water and then the Lord miraculously removed Philip. Here's the, here's the point. God has a man. God knows where there's a need. God always brings the two together. He does that in answer to prayer. I, I don't have any great big formula about how to tell you what to do. And I'm not going to tell you. It's up to the guys. These are very fine, godly, intelligent men. And I'm, tell, I'm telling you how they did it in the Bible. They fasted and prayed. And God gave them who they need. God, God 
knows this church better than all of us put together. And God knows what this church is. God knows what he has for the future of this church. And God is a man to lead you. You pray. You pray. My verse that I spoke at this morning, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the sun. Yes, the wind, the wind of change is blowing. But God rules the wind. Amen. And remember Romans 11.36, folks.